हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू उदेश एकेडमी फ्रेंड्स वन ऑफ द मेजर प्रॉब्लम्स व्हिच सिविल सर्वेंट्स टुडे आर फेसिंग इज दैट इफ दे आर डूइंग देयर जॉब ऑनेस्टली आल्सो एंड इफ देयर इज अ मिस्टेक दे आर ऑफन पनिश्ड वन ऑफ द ट्रेजिडी ऑफ सिविल सर्विसेज इज दैट इफ यू आर डूइंग हंड्रेड थिंग्स राइट यू मे नॉट गेट एनी रिवॉर्ड बिकॉज ऑल द प्रमोशंस all the pay and perks are basically based on seniority but if you commit one mistake in that situation you may be punished if that is the situation then many civil servants avoid taking decision and this often leads to policy paralysis and when one honest civil servant is punished without any reason in the sense that he has not committed any corruption it demoralizes large number of civil servants so this is a very hot and current topic nowadays and so this year that is in 2019 one case study was asked on this particular topic the title of the case study is protecting honest civil servants so let's go to the case study honesty and uprightness are the hallmarks of civil servants Civil servants possessing these qualities are considered as the backbone of any strong organizations. In the line of duty they take various decisions at time some becomes bona fide mistakes. As long as such decisions are not taken intentionally and do not benefit personally the officer cannot be said to be guilty. Though such decisions may at times lead to unforeseen adverse consequences in the long term in the recent past a few instances have surfaced wherein civil servants have been implicated for bona fide mistakes they have often been prosecuted and even imprisoned these instances have greatly rattled the moral fiber of the civil servants now let's understand the problem the problem is how does this trend affect the functioning of the civil services what measures can be taken to ensure that honest civil servants are not implicated for bona fide mistakes on their part you have to justify your answer now let us try to analyze this problem in detail we know that integrity is one of the most important qualities of the civil servant if the civil servant is having all the good qualities but he does not have integrity in that situation he cannot discharge his functions properly he is rather a threat to the department and to the nation so integrity is one of the very important quality of a civil servant but integrity does not mean only financial integrity that is not taking bribe or not taking any personal benefit in lieu of doing your work that means not taking illegal gratification it is much more than that the proper meaning of integrity includes professional integrity and intellectual integrity professional integrity means that you should be up to the job or position which has been assigned to you you should be professionally competent if you are a police officer you should be a competent police officer if you are a tax officer you should be competent tax officer then intellectual integrity that means that we should do what we think is right instead of doing what our bosses tells us or what is going to benefit us or by what we can avoid the pain we must do what we think is right now there are many honest government officers civil servants who are not professionally competent as they don't work hard to upgrade their knowledge and skills once they join the service as a result they don't know their job properly and therefore even though their intention may be good but they end up committing huge mistakes on the other side there are some government officers who are not intellectually honest and they follow even the illegal orders of their superior officers or the politicians they may not be taking any money but they are following even the illegal orders of their superiors or the senior politicians now that is also something which is unacceptable some officers are also very casual in their approach and they don't take precautions while taking important decisions now such type of officers also commit lots of mistake because they are very casual and they don't go through the files they don't understand the issue and they are very casual in their approach so just because you are not taking any personal benefit or your intention is not bad it does not mean that you are not committing any mistake 
Now recently there has been some instances where senior IS officers has been punished because of doing something which has caused loss to the government. Recently Delhi High Court sentenced the former coal secretary H.C. Gupta to three years of imprisonment in a coal block allocation scam which happened during the previous UPA regime at the center in which the country lost around 2 lakh crore rupees of revenue according to the report which has been given by Comptroller and Auditor General. Now this is such a big amount, 2 lakh crore. Now even though this amount may be exaggerated, but it is a fact that a huge amount of revenue has been lost because of some decisions which has been taken by the government and the civil servant. Therefore, the court observed in this particular case, such white collar crimes are in fact more dangerous to the society than ordinary crimes. Firstly, because the financial losses are much higher and secondly, because of the damage inflicted on the public moral. The average loss from ordinary crimes such as burglaries, robberies and larcenaries, etc. may run into few thousand rupees only. But the loss which the white collar crimes may run not only in lakhs but in crores of rupees. So that is the observation which the courts have made and you can understand that 2 lakh crore rupees are such a huge amount that if somebody has done it, even though it may not be his mistake, even though he has not benefited personally on that, still the court and the public is not going to take it lightly. Now when such mistakes happen, even though you may not have personally benefited, but still the civil servants are punished in such cases. You have to understand that civil servants are the steel frame of Indian government and they are experts in running the government. The politicians are not experts. They are elected by the people to represent the view of the people. But running the day to day government is actually the responsibility of the government officers. The elected representative perform their duties according to the advice and assistance of the civil servants. And civil servants has to work very honestly and give the right advice to the politicians. And therefore civil servant must not do anything wrong nor allow the politicians to do anything wrong because without their advice the politicians cannot act. They must not buckle under the pressure as their job is secured by the constitution. We have to understand that the politicians can always be voted out of power. But as far as the civil servants are concerned, they have been given constitutional protection. So once you join the civil services, your job is secured till your retirement. And you have to also understand that even your promotions and pay and everything is protected according to the constitution. And it has been done so that you can do your job honestly without any pressure or temptation. They can't avoid punishment if due to their action, country has suffered huge losses as we have seen in the case of coal scam and the public servant has to be accountable for their decisions and actions. So we cannot say that because a public servant has not taken any money, therefore he should not take any action on them. We have to ensure that all the public servants are accountable. Now let's understand the concept of bona fide mistake. Civil servants take a large number of decisions in discharge of their duties. They may sometimes commit mistakes while discharging their functions without any bad intentions. Bona fide basically is a Latin word which means in good faith. That means when you are doing something, it has been done in good faith. That means there was no bad intention while doing your action. Bona fide mistakes means an unintentional mistake or oversight. Because you are taking so many decisions, therefore sometime there can be a bona fide mistake. You did not have any bad intention and still the mistake was committed. Civil servants are protected under the law if their mistakes are bona fide. Please understand that under every law, there is a protection that if you do the job and still commit a mistake and if it is a bona fide mistake, you are protected. Like a police officer, a custom officer, a tax officer, even if they commit a mistake while honestly discharging their duties, which may end up into undesirable consequences, they are protected. However, it is to be remembered that the police officer or the government officers has to follow all the due process of law and take due precaution while taking the decision. So if you are taking a decision without taking due precaution, then such protection is not available. Now sometime what happens that you are taking so many decisions and still you have committed some mistake. So in that situation, if your intention is not bad, it is innocuous mistake and still if the government takes action then it may have bad consequences, bad results for the civil services. Civil services in general get demoralized when they are punished without any fault. See if the person has committed a fault, if he is punished, he will accept. 
But if a person has not committed any fault and still is punished, then it has a demoralizing effect. As a result, what happened that they stop taking decisions in performance of their duty. And they also avoid taking important positions in government where they have to take critical decisions. For example, like district collector, SP, or like important secretaries or tax officers. Now, when you are in these chairs, you have to take decisions. And so if the decisions start getting punished, then the civil servants stop taking these positions. They avoid taking these positions. And as a result, what happens that the efficiency of the government is reduced and then public suffers because there will be total policy paralysis because nobody takes decision and public suffers because of that. Now, what measures can be taken in such situation to protect the civil servants against their bona fide mistakes? First of all, that we have to provide legal protection to the civil servants that if any mistake is bona fide, then no action will be taken against them without the permission of the appropriate authority. So approval of the government must be needed before investigation starts or before filing the prosecution in every case so that if the mistake is bona fide, the government can protect the civil servants. The reputation of the officer and his track record during the entire career must be taken into account. If a government officer is there for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years in the department, people know what type of officer they have. So suppose he has taken thousands of decisions and in no decision he has committed any mistake. And if one decision there has been a mistake, then that should be ignored. Civil servants must be provided regular training to build capacities for improving their professional competence. This is also something very much required because unless the civil servants are competent, they will not be able to take right decisions. So regular training is also required. We should also have a mechanism for checks and balances. For example, audit and inspection of the important decisions which are taken by the government must be examined by independent agency on very priority basis so that if there is any mistake that should be corrected as quickly as possible without the country suffering from it. So quick audit and inspection must be there for all important decisions of the government officers. And at the same time, it is also important that the civil servants must develop the reputation, must develop integrity, and they have to become responsible and accountable to the people. In general, the reputation of the civil servants is not good. And therefore, even if they commit some bona fide mistake, they are punished. And that can happen only if their reputation is good, people have trust over them. In that situation, the courts or the public or the media will be willing to ignore some of their bona fide mistakes. But for that, they have to really develop a reputation of honesty, integrity, and professional competence. So friend, this is a very interesting and pertinent case study. And I hope that with this lesson, you should be able to write a great uh, answer to this particular case study. Please try your answers and we'll give you the feedback. Thank you very much for watching this lesson.